second. Okay, so we will start with the unit four of uh, uh, MBD course. Right now, before I start uh, into deep diving for the unit four, let me just tell you a couple of things. Right. Uh, so far, whatever that we have been exposed to is the MapReduce uh, programming, right? Uh, how programming is done in different flavors, either in Unix part of it or in the Linux versions uh, part of it. Um, few details about the HDFS system with compressor and other aspects. So now whatever that we are trying to deep dive into for the unit four basically deals with the MapReduce application, when it is being deployed, what, how are the testing and other things done for the MapReduce application, right? Uh, the second part of it is, um, once when you do uh, a MapReduce job, right, how does your cluster ba basically treat it, right? Now, if you execute a C program, right, let's say that you are trying to do a bubble sort program, right? You execute that particular program and uh, you see an output. Now, if at all there is an error in that particular program, right? What would you do? You would go back to the source code, check where is the point where the error is, right? So this is how that uh, this is how you are uh, you are doing in uh, your trivial C program, right? Until unless you get the expected uh, output of that particular program, you keep searching for uh, the you keep debugging the program. Uh, till you fix the error, what is there in that particular program. Now, similarly, when you talk about a MapReduce kind of a program, obviously we are coding, humans are coding. It is prone to uh, uh, go into any kind of errors, right? So when we are uh, into any kind of errors in a MapReduce kind of a programming, how should you test the MapReduce program or debug the MapReduce program, understand the anatomy of how the job run is done, understand how the uh, test cases are uh, done in case of MapReduce, right? Which would help you to debug the entire program, right? So this is the overall objective of MapReduce uh, unit four, which talks about the various types of uh, MapReduce input formats, output formats, job scheduling, test cases, MR unit. So these are the uh, topics that we are basically studying in case of the unit four, right? So let me just uh, share my screen across so that it, it will be visible to all of you. Okay, so unit four is uh, titled as MapReduce application, right? So unit four, the outline of this is writing a unit test case with MR unit. MR unit is a debug test unit case, right? Uh, similarly, you have got a, a, a testing softwares like, uh, like J unit, right? Selenium and other test uh, softwares, no? Similarly, in case of MapReduce applications, the testing is done using MR unit, right? The anatomy of the MapReduce job run, the classic MapReduce, yarn, the failures in the classic MapReduce, Right, job scheduling, which is done in YAR, shuffle and chart, task execution, map reduce types, input formats, and output formats. So these are the topics that we are basically going to study in this particular uh, uh, chapter or the unit. So a MR test case unit or a test unit is basically a you uh, uh, is basically a testing library which will help you to debug a map under re reduce function right you know that maps map and reduce function are typically written in a functional type of aspects right it is completely written in functional language right it is completely in a functional format that you are writing it right so since because of this your testing library, whatever that makes use of mapper and reducer, will have to check the outputs as expected and try to do, and try to the uh, try to work out with respect to this uh, map reduce test case, right? Now, MR unit is basically a testing library which works in conjunction with the execution of a underlying test framework, 
right in java the underlying test framework is j unit right j unit is the underlying test framework which is used right so this is uh, one of the important aspects that you need to understand with respect to mr unit right so you can see that at the bottom of my slide i have given you a link right so this is the link where you can understand the working of uh, the incubator for uh, mr unit right so an example of an mr unit test class an mr unit test class looks like this so you can see that in the previous example we had uh, uh, you know created a mapper test a mapper class and a reducer class if you remember for the example of uh, temperature uh, uh, maximum temperature determination uh, in the unit 3 so a simple class of testing may look, look something like this right you can see that the public class max temperature mapper test uh, right this h symbol is a annotation which is used in java right so this after this you can see that there are certain um, steps which are being written which are values that is being sent into mapper class and uh, some output classes and you can see at the end dot run test right now when you use this particular method as dot run test it basically uh, it basically runs the entire program for a running purpose of it right this is a test run it is not a actual run of uh, that particular program right now after this is uh, this particular thing is done right you can see that uh, this uh, after this uh, test case is basically executed you can see that it basically gives you an output right so this sample output may be uh, understood whether it is giving you a correct output or not not a correct output from this particular example right so the test units are basically done to understand uh, the unit test cases for this particular program and just to find out whether the unit test case is working or not so this is the overall ob objective of uh, mr test unit so the mr test unit uses two or two or three important classes and as well as functions what are these classes and functions right the first and the foremost is it uses a class called as map driver now this map driver is basically an output driver right which records the output records which comes out of the execution of a mapper class right so here the uh, very important function that is associated with that is the number of times with uh, output the is being called right so the other important function is the number format exception which uh, which basically puts across uh, the exceptions right there are certain errors and exceptions which come in the program right for example if the uh, data whatever that we are trying to deal with is not in the number format it is in some other format it is uh, it basically throws this particular exception called as number format exception right so these are some of the important classes as well as methods that you basically use right for example you have a parsint here now this particular parsint the job of this particular function is it takes an alpha numeric data or an, al an alphabetic data or a string type data converts that into a numeric type data right for example when you open a text file which is consisting of years and temperature then uh, it is basically represented as a string type it is not treated as a integer type there so as in when you pass that particular data it gets converted from a string type to a integer type right that is the advantage of this particular uh, function so you can see that this is a corrected version of that particular uh, uh, code right so where you can see how the uh, uh, the hi highlights whichever has been made you can see that these are the corrections which are being made in that particular uh, program so you can also do the unit test case for a reducer class right 
So the reducer class will look something like this. You can see that um, at the end, whenever you see dot run test, this entire test case belongs to only the um, unit test case, right? It, it only belongs to the uh, uh, testing of that reducer uh, class, basically. So this is again another example where the corrections are being made uh, with respect to this particular example. Uh, you can see that um, uh, you know this is a same example as what we have done in the uh, previous uh, units. So there are uh, certain advantages with this right local test that we do right the reason is without affecting the actual cluster or without affecting whatever is there in that particular cluster we can basically drive the entire uh, uh, system uh, we can basically enter uh, drive the entire uh, system for a local test right before the cluster uh, starts right so that is done with the help of something called as local tests right that is you locally test the uh, values of that particular application find out if it is giving you an appropriate output and, uh, and do it. So the Hadoop comes with uh, something called as local job runner, right? Now this is a miniaturized version of the MR execution engine, which runs on the MR job, right? So you have got single, uh, uh, you have got a single JVM, right? Java virtual machine, where in which all the jobs basically execute. Right? So the, now this local job runner basically executes on this JVM and it's a miniaturized version of it which, which affects the local values which are stored in local files. Right, That is, it affects only one particular data node. It does not replicate or cascade that particular execution uh, to all the data nodes as being done in a MR execution. Right Now this is used for only testing purposes and is very conveniently available in uh, Eclipse IDE. So the local job runner can be activated something like this, right? Uh, it can be activated or enabled using the configuration settings, right? There's a configuration settings called as map red dot job dot tracker. And there is a host to port part of it uh, pair in the that particular uh, uh, file, right? For example, if you can see that uh, MVN compile is there in that particular file, right? Then you have export Hadoop underscore class path is equal to so and so so and so. Right. So now what you can do here is you can basically change the driver configuration here to the local XML file. Right. And you can see uh, input NCDC micro output, right, which will basically turn this entire example of running into the Hadoop cluster as a simple uh, example which runs on uh, the local machines. So how do you test that particular driver? So the configuration which is implemented in that particular implementation tool, right? You can test that arbitrary configuration, whatever that you do, by injecting that particular lines of codes in the actual uh, problem, right? There are two approaches of doing this. Either you can use a local job runner for to doing this, run the job against the test file and on the local system, or you can use it on a set of small clusters, right? You can have a test cluster of uh, consisting of uh, some four to five nodes, right? And run on that particular node, right? The first one, whatever that we do on a local job runner, gives you an idea of how it basically behaves in a pseudo distributed mode of working of the Hadoop cluster. When you talk about uh, uh, testing the driver on a mini cluster, you get the idea of how that particular uh, a uh, program behaves in a small cluster of a fully distributed mode consisting of a small cluster of nodes about four to ten or four to five depending on the scale of work whatever that we do right these are the way in which you can test the behavior on a single mission basis or so on a clustered basis okay so these are the two scenarios of uh, testing that particular uh, application Okay. 
so if you are using a local job runner on a local file system the entire code looks like this right so your configuration setting whatever that you are trying to do you are reducing that local tracker to only the local host which is uh, your local host, uh, host address is 127.0.0.1 right that is your local ip address right you are uh, reducing it to that particular uh, uh, local file system so you have ins inserted for your previous example right whatever that you have seen in unit 3 you have inserted these three lines of codes right to make it or localize the entire execution only to a local machine and not to a global cluster so here if you see that uh, uh, these two classes whatever that we see fs.default.name and mapreduce.job.tracker they basically represent items under local file system and local job runner right so if you are using the max temperature driver via this tool interface with a small amount of known data right so this is basically restricting the entire output uh, to a local file system right and you can also see that there is a check output method which is uh, uh, being given which will basically show the actual output of that particular expected line right it is as good as you put a print of line for within a loop or print of line out of the loop just to find out what is a value of a iterator value of that particular loop variable or some variable which which is there within the loop trying to understand what is the values that are recorded so similarly when you are trying to do some checking methods like that you can use this check output method which basically does the comparison with the actual output line by line so when you are running it on a cluster that is a mini cluster right uh, you have to separate the entire cluster with mini clusters let's say that you have got 100 nodes and you are using four of these nodes only for testing or 10 of these nodes for testing you have to declare that it's a mini dfs cluster now this mini dfs cluster is used only for testing purposes and nothing else apart from that right so you can see classes with respect to that you have mini dfs cluster mini mr cluster and mini yarn cluster now these are the testing classes which separates the behavior of the entire program from an actual mr program into a mr test case program right now this is a programmatic way of uh, creating an in process clusters which will help you to do uh, testing on a uh, on a local machine basis on a local cluster basis okay so this will basically help you to run the um, jobs on different cluster nodes i will also help you to run the task trackers on uh, different nodes and um, uh, jvms which are running in the respective tasks right which will help you to debug more uh, efficiently but again uh, the debugging in a mini cluster is slightly difficult when compared with uh the actual uh, one so anatomy of a map reduce job run so you can run the job uh, using a single method of submit right um using a method which talks about map reduce job tracker right um there are different scenarios which comes under the map reduce 2 right the map reduce 2 as you know has got something called as yarn right this yarn basically facilitates a resource managing capability in uh, uh, the uh, system map reduce system right hence this is a very important aspect of it so i would like to stop at this particular slide for today right and uh, resume with the remaining uh, aspects in the next class right